and welcome to another week of a pond further review i'm josh aubrey area high school football's uh, regular seasons wrapping up this past week as we had the statesboro blue devils with a lot on the line on the road at new hampstead a win put them into the number three seed in the upcoming state tournament so they avoid the number one seed and they were able to pick up a big victory there on the road in Pooler. As for the Southeast Bullock Yellow Jackets, a win would secure them of the number two seed and they get to host the opening round of the state playoffs, which they do. They'll be hosting Liberty County. They were able to knock off the Johnson Adams Smashers after a little bit of a slow start. They got things going and pulled off the victory there. As for the Bullock Academy Gators, they were hosting Frederica for the region championship and the number one seed in the state on the line. Unfortunately, the Gators fell hard to Frederica and now they'll be the number two seed hosting Brookwood later on this week there on Friday night at Gator Alley. Last for the Georgia Southern Eagles was a bit of bad news as well. The Eagles went on the road to Louisiana Monroe where they were a considerable favorite and ended up losing pretty badly in that game. Their first Sunbelt loss of the season. Next up for the Eagles, they'll be looking to rebound against Troy and a victory against Troy. And then uh, they could run the table. They will win the East. So the Eagles still control their own destiny. If they are to pick up a win against Troy and then win the last two games against Georgia State and Coastal, they will be the Eastern champs and will be able to host the Sun Belt Championship game. Well, we'll be getting to plenty of that in just a moment. Before we go to break, we'd like to hope you'll all be safe out there, but if you happen to be in an injury or have an accident, we'd like to encourage you to contact the Sullivan Law Firm at thesullivanlawfirm.com or give them a call 912-489-8888. The Medical Center Pharmacy on Grenade Street is proud to be your Health Mart Pharmacy in Statesboro. The Medical Center Pharmacy, locally owned and serving this community for 50 years, is open 364 days a year. The pharmacists at Medical Center know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. That's why they take the time to know their customers, explain their medications, and answer any questions. The Medical Center Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles on the road at Louisiana Monroe, a game they just as soon forget. But let's get out and see some highlights and hear from head coach Chad Lunsford. Georgia Southern looking to remain on top in the Sun Belt on the road at Louisiana Monroe. But the Warhawks had other plans. They'd start the scoring. Caleb Evans goes in from five yards out to make it 6 0 as the extra point was blocked. A little bit later, going to the air, finding success. And it's Caleb Evans to Marcus Green for the 80-yard touchdown to make it 13 to nothing. More from Monroe. They take a 20 to nothing lead. Tyler Bass adds a 38-yard field goal to cut the lead to 20 to three. But Monroe right back. Josh Johnson goes in from one yard out to make it 27 to three. The Eagles respond. Getting an interception here. And then going in for the touchdown. The pass from Shy Wirtz. Good for the score. And the lead cut to 27 to 10. But again, Monroe would come back in the third quarter. Derek Gore goes in for the touchdown to make it 34 to 10. The Eagles able to get some points from their defense as Jesse Liptrot comes up with the interception and goes 57 yards for the touchdown. But Monroe, too much on this afternoon. Caleb Evans goes in for another score. Monroe takes a 41 to 18 lead 
and they'd go on to take this one by a final count of 44 to 25. Well, first off, we got to give credit to uh, Louisiana Monroe. Uh, tremendous job by their coaching staff, tremendous job by their players. Uh, we said all week that uh, ULM would uh, bring their game because, I mean, shoot, they, they've really come into their own lately. So we've got to give a lot of credit to them and their coaching staff and uh, just that awesome job. But um, I told the team, I said, hey, it, you know, it sucks. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't go put all this hard work in to lose. Um, you know, we got served some humble pie today. And, uh, you know, that starts with me. Um, I told them, you know, from the top down, um, I've got to take responsibility for this thing. Our coach has got to take responsibility for it and then our players. So we all got to be able to point the finger at ourselves and go, hey, what are we going to do to get this thing right? Um, you know, it, it was it, it was great. We were, you know, 7-1. and one, And then you go in there and you, you, you don't do well. And uh, you get that loss and it smacks you right in the face. And uh, it tells you, you know, hey, we got to go back to work and we got to make sure that uh, we're on point and we got to go finish this season out the way we want to. I think they did a really good job, you know, having that off week. Uh, that, I think they did a really good job of, um, you, I, I think they built on what they already had, offense and defense. And, uh, um, you know, we, we could have played a better football game, but, I, you know, again, hats off to them. I think they did a really good job. I said, you know, we, we hate to lose. We don't want to lose, uh, but we did. Uh, but we can't let us. Uh, we can't let that affect us for the next one. We're still one game a week. That's that's what we've been from the start, and, and no reason for that to change now. We do control our own destiny, so we got to get ready for Troy. What's your message to Eagle Nation ahead of that game? Uh, just love for y'all to come on out, uh, support us. Uh, obviously, the power of Paulson is real. Um, we saw that this whole year, and I, you know, I just would love to see that thing packed out, um, so that you, you know we we can feel that energy and feel that power. So as we mentioned up next, the Eagles with a big matchup against Troy. Troy currently leading the Eastern Division, undefeated in the Sun Belt at 5-0. That game getting underway Saturday at 1 o'clock at Paulson Stadium. What does it mean to have financial freedom? At Queensboro Wealth Management, we're helping people figure that out. And giving them a plan to get there. If you have a desire to take control of your finances and live with financial purpose, we, we, we will use every bit of our knowledge to help you and there's no cost to get started. Download a free kit from our website, then give any of us a call. QWM is Queensboro Wealth Management. Let's begin today. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy. In-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests and ultrasounds, in-house lab. And introducing our new nurse practitioner, Melissa Beasley, as we now accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, where we care. Well, on the high school front, Statesboro Blue Devils going on the road to New Hampstead. They knew they had advanced to the state playoffs with their victory this past week against South Effingham, but a win on Friday would give them the number three seed and they could avoid the number one. They had to go on the road nonetheless. Let's get out and take a look at some highlights from Statesboro and New Hampstead. The Statesboro Blue Devils wrapping up the regular season, trying to earn the number three seed in the state at New Hampstead in the Phoenix Looking to take the lead early on as quarterback Jarrell Armstrong throws it up and Sam Brown hauls it in inside the five. But Statesboro defense stiffens from there. Ames Radcliffe slows Armstrong down and then Flip Dixon delivers the big hit. Then from the two, it's Corey McCullough and Chris Hill helping stand up Dontre Wallace. The Phoenix will try for a field goal. They jump off sides and Issa Mobley with the tackle. The game remained scoreless. The Blue Devil offense then put some points on the board as Jalen Robertson gets outside. The he'd shed a few tackles and go 21 yards for the score. 7-0 Blue Devils after one in the second. The Phoenix come back and it's DeAndre Ruffin getting outside and somehow manages to escape. And he goes 65 yards for the touchdown, tying the game at 7-all. Then pinned at their own 10, the Phoenix strike again as Justin McKithen makes a couple of Blue Devils miss and then he's off to the races. 
sprinting 90 yards for the touchdown, and it was 14 to 7. New Hampstead on top. The Blue Devils continue to struggle as on the punt, a couple guys get through. It's blocked. Jalen Bowens will scoop and score, and the Blue Devils find themselves down 21 7. But with less than a minute left, the offense moves downfield. Drake Horton finds Ryan Lindsey for 25 yards. Then Horton looking left. He's got Corey Gibson for the touchdown. A big play is the lead. Cut to 21 to 14 at the half. Second half and Coach Kaiser's crew starts out hot from the opening kickoff. Devadri and Lipsy with a nice return to midfield. Lipsy then able to get 10 more of his 129 yards rushing. Teammate Jalen Robertson goes over 180 yards rushing. And then capping the drive, it's Robertson from four yards out for the touchdown and we're tied at 21 all. The defense continues to pitch the second half shutout. Dake Williams coming up with the sack here. And then pinned deep. A high snap sends the punter scrambling and the Blue Devils take advantage. Coming up in excellent field position. We move to the fourth quarter. And on the first play from scrimmage, it's Robertson around the left side going in for the score. Statesboro with 21 unanswered points to take a 28-21 lead. The Phoenix will go for it on fourth and 12. Good defense here, incomplete pass. Statesboro takes over and it's Robertson with the 33 yard pickup down the left side. And then finishing off the drive, it's Lipsy going in for the touchdown, 35-21 Statesboro. The finishing touch would be delivered by cornerback Issa Mobley. A big hit here. And Statesboro earns a number three seed and will take on Griffin Friday as they win 35-21. So up next for the Blue Devils, they will be on the road at Griffin, the number two seed, coming up this Friday night. Stay with us. We'll head out to Brooklyn next. No Credit Refused isn't just an offer, it's a way of business and has been for over 100 years. No banks, no ridiculous credit requirements, just local Badcock store owners who treat you right and give you credit when others won't. It's never been easier to express your style and love your home. Visit us locally here in Statesboro at Piedmont Loop beside Walmart. It's now time for our Southeast Bullock segment brought to you by Martin Turf Farm. Well, the Southeast Bullock Yellow Jackets knew a victory over Johnson would give them the number two seed in the state playoffs and they get to play Another game at Fred Shaver Field. Let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights from Southeast Bullock at Johnson. Southeast Bullock looking to wrap up the number two seed in the state, hosting Johnson. The defense starts off strong for Southeast, and then it's quarterback Blaze Minnick keeping it himself, and he goes in from five yards away to make it seven to nothing. Johnson able to answer early in the second quarter as quarterback LeGregory Dykes finds Joseph Williams, who makes a couple of nice moves, cuts back and goes in for the touchdown. The extra point failed, and it was 7-6 Southeast Bullock. And from there, it was all jackets. On the ensuing kickoff, C.J. Coney doing his best Barry Sanders impersonation as he goes all the way to the left side and then cuts all the way back across the field, and he... Gets the ball down to the 30. A few plays later, the give to 
Clayton Jordan, who goes in for the touchdown. 14-6, still in the second to give to Jordan again. He gets down the near side, but is ruled out at the 26. No problem, though, as Minnick will drop back and find his favorite receiver, Tyler Bailey, who hauls it in. 21-6, Southeast Bullock. To the third quarter we go. Minnick fools everybody as he takes this one himself and goes 31 yards for the score. Minnick, the leading rusher with 75 yards. Southeast on top, 28-6. The defense continues to keep the Adam Smashers in check. Justin Bradley, the sack later. The block punt ends up being a safety. 30-6 Southeast. Minnick then continues his big night as he goes 15 yards for his third touchdown of the game. And finally, in the fourth quarter, it's Logan Gomez with the finishing touch as he goes in from five yards out and Southeast rolls 44-6 the final. So the victory secures the Yellow Jackets of the number two seed in the state playoffs that begin on Friday. They'll be hosting Liberty County. Of course, earlier this year, Liberty County played Statesboro, and Statesboro won that game against Liberty at home. All right, stay with us. We'll wrap things up with the Bullock Academy Gators coming up next. This portion of the Southeast Bullock Football Coaches Show is brought to you by Clayton Digital Reprographics. A sports injury can stop you in your tracks. At Optum Orthopedics, our specialized physicians and staff use advanced orthopedic procedures with one specific goal in mind, to get you back to you. If you have a sports injury, request an evaluation. Experience the Optum difference. Friday night lights to early morning deer stands, Anderson's General Store in Statesboro is your tailgating and hunting headquarters. Boots from Ariat, Georgia Boot, Irish Setter, Wolverine, and more, we have a pair for you. Check out our Costa and Ray-Ban sunglasses, and apparel from Columbia, Carhartt, and Drake. Dove, ducks, deer, we have all your hunting needs, and tailgate with a big green egg or Traeger grill Pack in the flavor with delicious sauces and rubs. Haul it all home with a utility trailer. Anderson's General Store, a general store and so much more. We are feeling fall at RJ Pope's Men's and Ladies Apparel. Stop by RJ Pope's in the Buckhead Plaza and check out their new expansion with plenty more to offer. Featuring brands like Mountain Khakis, Pants by Cool, jackets and shirts as cooler weather is upon us. With the largest selection of Georgia Southern and University of Georgia game day apparel, we make sure you're dressed to win at tailgating. When you're not cheering on your favorite team, we have your style covered online and in store at our three locations. Well, the Brook Academy Gators knew that coming off of their three straight victories, that a win against Frederica would put them into the state playoffs as the number one seed and give them the region championship. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Got off to a slow start, fought back late, but it was too little, too late. Let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights. Bullock Academy hosting Frederica for the region championship at Gator Alley. First quarter and the Gators moving downfield. Don Aaron keeps it himself, picks up 21 yards into Knight's territory. Later, it's Aaron. Once again, and he dives ahead inside the 10, but that drive stalls. And unfortunately for the Gators, the field goal attempt just missed wide left. No score. The Knights able to move downfield. Jalen Simpson on second and long gets ahead for a first down. And then it's Simpson going in for the touchdown as Frederica takes a 7-0 lead in the second. It's Simpson swinging it over to Denver Anthony who gets into Gator territory for a first down. And then it's Simpson on the keeper getting just inside the 10. 
And from there, the give is to Isaiah Jackson. He's in for the touchdown. 14 to nothing, Frederica. Both Academy trying to answer before the half. Jake Nelson with a nice run for a first down. But later, the Gators go for it on fourth. And would end up just shy. And we go to the half with Frederica leading 14 to nothing. Second half. And the Knights start to pull away. They give to Anthony, and he breaks free and goes 60 yards for the touchdown. And it's 21 to nothing. The Knights on top. Still in the third, and check out the run by Simpson. The Auburn commit showing why as he somehow manages to stay on his feet. Cuts back, makes a few Gators miss. 25-yard touchdown. It's 28 to nothing. Later down 35-0, the Gators finally get a successful charge. Mingle with a first down, and then Aaron finds Nate Rice all alone for the touchdown. It's 35-7, but in the fourth, the Knights answer as Simpson goes in once again. Frederica with over 500 yards of offense. The Gators respond with Don Aaron finding Mingle for the touchdown. They'd add a Matt Childers touchdown reception and an Owen Anderson field goal, but it would be far too little too late as B.A. falls 49 to 24. So despite the loss, the Bullock Academy Gators will be hosting the opening round of the state playoffs. They'll be hosting Brookwood Friday night at 7.30. Well, that'll wrap it up for this uh, show. We'll be back with our midweek show coming up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday.